Good afternoon, Madam President. Um, I rise uh, with a few comments on the uh, budget before us. And um, in trying to review the document, obviously it's quite lengthy, um, I did have a few questions that I would like to ask for the proponent of the bill, please. Through you. And would that be our, would that be Senator Austin or Senator Fonfara? Um, I would choose either one. Uh, probably Senator Fonfara. It has to do with um, taxing of uh, prepared foods. I just had a question. I quick think that would be within record. his bailiwick. Senator Fonfara, prepare yourself. Uh, please proceed. Thank you. So, through you, uh, Madam President, I wanted to just, for the record, get clarity on the 1% tax on the prepared food. And the way that it reads, it says um, that cafeteria food would be taxed. And I wanted to see if that includes school lunches, which would be prepared food. I think there's, I'd like to get that out on the record. I would assume it's not, but I wanted to make sure. That's all, if you could. Thank you, Senator Summers, Senator Fonfara. Yes, thank you, Madam President. Through you, thank you, Senator Summers. Uh, school um, foods are not taxed under current law. Through you, Madam President. Senator Summers. Thank you. I just, I thank you for that answer. I wanted to get that for the record because it wasn't clear in the text language because it said cafeteria. So I want to make sure that people that are watching this understand that their child's lunch will not be taxed if they buy prepared food at school. Um, moving on from that. Uh, my concerns on this budget are, again, we are now for X year in a row giving an $800 million tax increase to the citizens of Connecticut that have already overwhelmingly shared with, I'm certain, each one of us that they are feeling absolutely overburdened. And then another over $900 million tax increase uh, in the following year. This is something that we continue to do year after year here in the state of Connecticut. And you can see the results with the decrease in business. And uh, whether we want to believe it or not, if you look at the census, people leaving. There was just another article about people leaving Connecticut and the average salary is $250,000. And they're not just going south. They're going to Massachusetts. They're going to New York. If we have a replacement job, it's coming in at less than a third of the people that are leaving. Um, that concerns me, and I feel that the policies that we are instituting and the budgets that we're passing are adding to that. Um, my concerns also about this budget are the, the process in which this budget was developed. There are many, many items in this budget that never had a full public hearing. There was bills that never came in front of a committee. Um, people did not have an opportunity to weigh in. There was no input from those affected. There was no input from the public. And I think that's bad policy. Um, that is not what we're set up to do here. Um, that's not what this chamber represents. And there is quite a bit of that in this budget. There is uh, the framework for a public option, which never had a public hearing. Maybe the bill titled public option did. But what was in that bill and what is set up here uh, did not have a public option. I'm sorry, did not have a public hearing. Uh, there are, there was discussions on what types of bags to exclude as far as um, plastic bags are concerned. The alternatives were never given an opportunity to be heard. They were never given an opportunity for a hearing. And within this budget, they're carved out. We've had $100 million in state spending. We are re-amortizing debt that will cost our future generation $15 billion. And the list goes on and on. So this budget, for me, is exactly what we've seen for the past eight years here in Connecticut. And look where we are. We're at the bottom of all the economic indicators. This is history repeating itself again and again. There's no relief. There's no hope for working people in the state. There's no plan to fundamentally change government or reform the government that we have here. And there's no courage to change or to lift the burdens that have been placed on the working people of Connecticut over and over for the past eight years. There's been a lot of noise and a lot of talk made about negotiations, about some negotiations being done be, you know, behind prying eyes. Uh, there's been talk about a bipartisan effort, but in reality, 
Uh, this was done by people that are in the majority, this budget. And maybe it would have been easier to stomach if the result had been really an honest accounting of where we are and an honest uh, explanation to our citizens about our expenses, our liabilities, our true revenues, and our long-term obligations. But that's not what I see. If there had been a hint of an open door conversation uh, that was focused on growth, that was focused on prosperity and fairness for all, not just those who are in the majority here, I think we would be having a different outcome of this budget today. But instead, I feel that we've been given really a closed door process that has shut out regular citizens because there's things in here that nobody got to have any input on. It has shut out small businesses or they have not been listened to. We're putting a $50 million tax increase on them. And it endorses a bigger approach to government when we are not doing a good job as government. And what we've seen in this budget now is government touching every aspect of your life. I think that people are better off controlling their own life than having government control it for them. We also have left out many legislators in this process as far as the budget's concerned. And I do believe that being an effective government is not passing bills that sound great in the title uh, but, or that have, you know, good intentions, so to speak, but that good government is one that's able to provide for its most vulnerable, troubled residents, uh, its employers, and it needs to learn to prioritize. It learns from its mistakes, and it changes its approach when that approach is going in the wrong direction. We have not seemed to do that here in the state of Connecticut. So I believe that we need to really take a, a different approach. We need to dive down hard. We need to look at the areas of our weaknesses here in Connecticut. We need to look at the areas of weakness within our Connecticut agencies, the problems that they have, the challenges that they face. And I think we need to address them clearly and head on with the citizens, intentionally, in order to transform them and transform the future of Connecticut. I think we should all demand high standards, high accountability, and opportunity for all of us to prosper in, in, for our children and for our employers, and, and that's what our citizens deserve here in Connecticut. And I think that we need leaders that are willing to see the big picture, uh, not just an agenda for the next two years. And I think that that's lacking in this budget. This budget, you see those who are vulnerable not getting a cost of living adjustment, but you are seeing others who are already pretty entitled get massive, what I would consider massive uh, pay increases. You see new um, positions being created for those um, who are connected. And I say that government is not the solution, that people are the solution, and that government here in Connecticut has really been the problem and we're adding layers and layers of government to this budget. Um, I feel that if we continue down this path, we will continue to be our own problem. It's almost as if we can't get out of our own way. So I am someone who is um, not going to support this budget for a variety of reasons, but primarily because of the process, the massive tax increases, and I do believe that this is um, a budget that is status quo, we are just allowing Connecticut to vacillate as it has in its current state of affairs.